Welcome and thank you for joining us for the Denver Audubon's first virtual spring benefit. This is the first time that we actually didn't have to worry about the weather. Uh, my name is Carl Brummert. I'm the executive director of Denver Audubon. The spring benefit is a time when our community of supporters gathers together to socialize and reconnect. Although these unprecedented times have forced us into unusual circumstances, we also welcome new opportunities to do things differently. While we aren't in person together tonight, at least our carbon footprint is much smaller this time. Now, we pivoted our silent and live auction to online this year, and hopefully all of you are bidding right now. If you have had not had a chance to visit the auction site and bid yet, please grab your phone or iPad and visit birds3.gesture.com. And you can see that on the bottom of your screen there and see some of the great baskets, certificates, experiences, and other items we have this year. The auction will be closing five minutes after the program tonight. So please don't delay. Now, before we move on with the program, I do want to give my heartfelt thanks to an amazing group of volunteers who worked with Rhonda and I to make the spring benefit happen. They went above and beyond when we had to pivot to a completely virtual auction. Thank you to our wonderful co-chairs who led this committee, Alex Hall and Shelley Conger. And then gathering auction items and assisting with computer tasks requires a dedicated committee. Thank you, Betty Glass, Lynn Forrester, Barbara Hall, Lori Sharp, and Bridget Mills. Also, thank you to Ken Shower for the amazing videos that you will see shortly, and also for the photos of all the auction items. And of course, thank you, Rhonda, for all the administrative background work and Andy for all his marketing promotion. And the rest of the staff, Kate, Susie, and Emily for getting auction items. We could not have accomplished this without all of our volunteers and staff. Now, of course, these volunteers would love nothing more than for you to make some last minute bids on your favorite items or click to donate on the, the uh, online platform. Now I want to thank our generous sponsors. Our Eagle sponsor, Wendy Woods of Empower Retirement. Shelly Conger with Live Urban Real Estate. And I just want to also remind you that we're putting some of the um, web links to their web through to the sponsors websites on in the chat box. We also want to thank another Hawk sponsor, Giuseppe Battagaglioli for My Denver Home Loan, Children's Hospital Colorado, Yellow Dog Printing and Graphics, Management Partners, Delta Sigma Healthcare Consulting, Revel Rouser Events, and Emily Cheney with iHeartDenverHomes.com. I also want to thank our Falcon sponsors, Bridget Milnes, Dr. Labondi Avian Veterinarian, Tedford Dental, Partners in International Birding, Reese Rockies, and First Bank. And of course, we want to thank you, our supporters. We are so touched by the incredible outpouring of generosity everyone has shown Denver Audubon in the last few months, as well as over the last year before our world changed in March. We are so grateful for our community, who we also consider our family. We look forward to the day we can all socialize in person once again to share birding stories and our passion for protecting nature. Now, although this is the, uh, the first time I've probably dressed up in uh, three months and I would like to take advantage of the uh, extra camera time, I really do need to give someone else the spotlight. So, I would like to introduce our auctioneer extraordinaire, Sasha Summer Cousineau, who this is her third year working with Denver Audubon. We always enjoy her fun spirit, contagious enthusiasm to help Denver Audubon meet our fundraising goals. 
Tonight, she'll be leading you through several short presentations to give you a glimpse of some of the programming our amazing staff has been working on this year. So without further ado, take it away, Sasha. Thank you, Carl. And hello, everyone. It is such a pleasure to work with an incredibly awesome group of people like all of you at the Denver Audubon, from the hardworking staff to the dedicated volunteers to all the wonderful supporters. Yeah, I'm talking about you. You right there on the other end of the screen. I am talking about you. I'm so grateful to be here with our wonderful supporters who care so much about the Denver Audubon and the great work that we accomplish every single year. I'd like to start by sharing with you one of the newest programs Denver Audubon offers. It's called Birding Without Borders. This unique program connects people with disabilities to nature and to birding in a welcoming, fun setting in Denver parks and accessible trails. This is just one of many community outreach offerings we provide to our public and our members. And I got somebody I wanna to introduce to you, somebody we know and love who has something more to say on this topic. Please welcome to your screen, our community outreach coordinator, Kate Hogan. Today for Saturday, March 7th, we were here at City Park uh, for the launch of our Birding Without Barriers program. And it was a really wonderful day and we had a lot more participants than I originally had anticipated, which was exciting. My goal for Birding Without Barriers is twofold. Um, I would really like for us to have a map created that would be using GIS to be able to put different points where people who are looking to bird but are maybe not sure about accessibility options can actually go and use that as a resource to be able to find places to bird locally. And then also I would love to be able to long-term partner with other nonprofits who provide these services through their mission so that we can offer specific field trip opportunities for people who are in wheelchairs or walkers um, or just need the assistance uh, to be able to get out and go birding and see that they can absolutely enjoy birding and get outside and connect with nature. I grew up about a mile east of here. What I've discovered uh, through the Denver Audubon is that there are so many places very near where I live to see nice birds. And I've lived uh, in places where there are lots of exotic birds in East Africa for a decade or so, but um, the birding in my home city is it's just great. I'm also in my 40th year of being in a wheelchair and my body's not letting me do the things that it used to. So, you know, finding accessible places in town close to where I live is really important. I am a nurse. I've worked uh, 23 years in schools. Last year I received a fellowship from the Alliance of Nurses for Healthy Environments. And the, the goal of the fellowship really is to uh, bring the nursing perspective to different community groups that are working for really social and environmental justice issues. This project, Birding Without Barriers, really addresses social justice because we're finding areas, um, recognizing areas that are accessible to people with disabilities and making those available to folks, helping people to, to overcome their, their concerns about whether or not they'll be able to come out to these areas and to say to them, yes, you know, that, that there are paths that you can access. There are people out there that um, have similar interests. There's some phenomenally wonderful places that are really close by. How can we get people out in nature again? Because we know it's good for mental and physical health. We know it makes a difference for emotional health if people get out in nature. People who get out more and exercise and feel part of a group um, actually are healthier people, lead healthier lives. There are a lot of people who um, we think are just under the radar. They have disabilities, but they could get out a lot more if they knew what they could do. It's not just a physical thing. Um, people have their disabilities and they learn to live with those, but um, there's so much that many of us are not aware of that's available if we have the right encouragement and the right uh, opportunities. And Denver Audubon has provided that for burning.
as you can see, Denver Audubon is hard at work every day finding new ways to engage more people with the natural world around them. And we know that this is important to you because look, we're all here. We're all here together because we care about this. And we know you share a love of nature and you want that love to be shared throughout your community. So you can give in support of your values right now. It's so easy. Just go to our auction website, which is birds 3 dot gesture.com. There it is on the screen. We're going to pop it in the chat for you as well. We're going to make this as easy for you as possible to put your money in support of your values. Again, that's birds, the number three gesture.com. Let's turn now to the topic of conservation, a focus Denver Audubon has had since our founding over 50 years ago. This past January, Denver Audubon decided to dedicate a staff member to support our conservation efforts and to ensure that legacy of supporting conservation issues continues well into the future. Here is Susie Hiskey, conservation coordinator, to share what we've heard from our community as being important conservation issues to focus our efforts and educational efforts on. Take it away, Susie. Thank you for joining us. There are a lot of threats out there for birds, from habitat loss to pesticides, windows to climate change, but there's hope for birds as well, you and me. There are a lot of simple actions that people can take to help our beloved birds, wildlife, and their habitats. My name is Susie Hiskey. I am Conservation Coordinator for Denver Audubon, and Denver Audubon is inspiring actions for the birds. This past year, our outreach and, and public programs spread information and action throughout the community on how to protect birds. School and youth programs educated youth about birds and environments, inspiring our next generation to care. Our plethora of dedicated volunteers and committees spoke out for the birds, sharing the beauty and joy of birds on bird walks and during school and public programs, writing letters to local state and federal agencies, and doing community and city citizen science research, as well as funding graduate student scientists. Looking forward, we are working on an organizational wide conservation plan. This past March, I asked staff, board, and conservation committee members about threats to birds, as well as their vision for a bird-friendly city. They overwhelmingly envisioned bird-friendly habitat. They said things like, a high percent of plants in public and private spaces are native, so they can provide food for birds and lots of nesting places. A second person said obvious visible and physical protections and promotion of bird habitat and bird friendly spaces. And yet another, a large portion of the population is interested in birds. People do their best to make their yards or business property bird friendly and our city parks more natural. They also mentioned education and programming, bird safe buildings and windows, keeping cats indoors, and reducing pesticides. You can see some of those comments here. To accomplish this vision, we are calling upon the community. Denver Audubon will vigorously reach out to promote bird conservation in the Denver metro area. We, for, for, as part of this conservation plan, we will meet with active conservation organizations and community members, and we're going to reach out to you, our members, volunteers, and donors, to get some input to help us determine which actions are most impactful, as well as attainable, for improving conditions for birds in the metro area. With this list of actions, we will strengthen our partnerships and promote and create effective educational programs in the community. Some strategies we're already working on include expanding the Conservation in Colorado Adult Lecture Series, ensuring that conservation messages that meet our mission are in all Denver Audubon programs, and we are expanding our communications and streamlining our communications to share actions, such as working on web pages to provide conservation resources, creating and updating flyers for specific issues, 
and creating frequent blog posts to keep you updated and provide simple actions. This fall, we will be excited to bring you that conservation plan and share even more strategies with you. Thank you for your support and thank you in advance for your input on how we can make Denver the most bird-friendly city in the nation. Have a great night. And thank you, Susie, for your amazing work. We are here to support exactly what you're doing. Susie's been working hard to determine what conservation issues are important to you, our Denver Audubon friends and supporters, and is making plans to spread the message about conservation in our communities. Through the Lois Webster Fund and our bird banding station, we continue to invest in research impacting conservation initiatives and species health and wellness. Now, I know you're here because conserving habitats, making the Denver area more bird friendly and investing in research, these are issues that matter to you. That's why we all showed up today, right? So support that work, support what matters to you by heading to our website, which is birds3.gesture.com. Now, I have some more exciting stuff to share with you, and that is another recent addition to the ways in which Denver Audubon reaches our community. In March of 2018, we began a new program at the Children's Hospital South Campus in Highlands Ranch with the installation of bird feeders. Volunteers from Denver Audubon and Children's Hospital show children and their parents the birds that visit the feeders outside in outside the waiting room windows. And I know somebody who can explain this whole thing way better than I can. So allow me to welcome to your screen, volunteer Julia Gwynn. Hello, Denver Audubon supporters. I'm Julia Gwynn, and I am an, a volunteer naturalist with Denver Audubon. I am here right now at the bird feeders at Children's Hospital in Highlands Ranch. For the past two years, about a dozen Denver Audubon volunteers have been coming here to share our knowledge and love of birds with the young patients here. It's really fun to watch the kids when they get all excited when they see the detail on a bird up close with binoculars. Mostly, we get the usual feeder birds here. But there's a pair of red-tailed hawks that have built a nest on the roof. Um, and they put in a performance every time I've been here. And it's really cool. There's a, um, a prairie dog town just across the road here. And the children get a kick out of watching the prairie dogs. And we've also had a chance to watch the um, red tails hunting. Denver Audubon's doing this program in order to help connect children with nature and with birds. And the Children's Hospital really likes it because it helps um, give their young patients a normal childhood developmental experience, which can be in short supply for kids who have spent a lot of their young lives in medical settings. Um, they like the program so well that they have had their volunteer coordinator present it at the annual National Children's Hospital Convention last year. And now there are several other children's hospitals that are interested in having their own program. Right now, Children's Hospital is closed to volunteers because of the coronavirus. But eventually, it'll open up again and we will resume our engagement here. And when we do, we will find new ways to connect the children with birds. And until then, we will keep the feeders here filled so that the children in the waiting room have birds outside that they can watch and wonder about. Thank you, Denver Audubon supporters and members and staff and my fellow volunteers. We couldn't do this without you. Thanks. I love this program. I love this program. Imagine with me if you will, and I know you will because you're a good sport that way, but imagine you're a child and you're at Children's Hospital 
Generally, the reason for a child to be at Children's Hospital is not a super awesome one. Thank you to Children's Hospital for your work. So critically important. Um, but you and your parents, you're having a hard time. And then all of a sudden, you get to witness something unexpected, something joyful. You get to, even though you're in a hospital, experience the joy of nature and connect with the outside world. And Denver Audubon volunteers are there to help facilitate this connection for a child who could frankly probably really use the pick-me-up and the distraction. I'm so excited about this program. And what's even more exciting is that a few of the patients have actually donated some particularly special items to our auction tonight. And we are going to take a peek at them. Now we have them here on the screen, but if you have been poking around in our auction website, you see them there. They are items 501, 502, and 503. If you're having a tough time finding them, just scroll to the bottom. All the items are in numeric order. And again, that's online at birds3.gesture.com. These bluebird houses have been decorated and painted by some of the children we've had the opportunity to work with at Children's Hospital. These three items, they're so sweet and they're absolutely one of a kind. And they are a joyful reminder of the important ways that our work can bring not just education, but also happiness to people at a time when they need it. You, you, my lucky friend. Yes, I'm talking to you on the other side of the screen. You can be one of just a few people to take home these one of these one-of-a-kind birdhouses painted by one of the children at Children's Hospital. And I'm looking online at the bidding now. The bidding is looking lovely, but I think we can do a lot more for these one-of-a-kind items. Two of the houses are bid up to $65. One of them, wow, this is not bad, is bid up to $160. But look at you, you are an accomplished human. You are a philanthropic human. I know we can do better than that. So let's head on over to the website. Let's bid on items 501, 502, and 503 before our auction closes. And friendly reminder, don't say I didn't tell you, the online auction will close five minutes after we conclude this program. The Denver Audubon has been working with school groups since the early 1980s. We continue to offer high quality, one of a kind educational experiences for elementary, middle and high school students. Our focus is on connecting children to nature and developing the next generation of conservation stewards through real life projects. We often receive letters and these are so wonderful, from students expressing their appreciation. So let's turn now to Emily Hertz, our school programs coordinator, as she shares with us why she does what she does. For the students and teachers, what I'm hoping they get is that they can make a difference um, in the world, that every day we each can make choices that can impact the environment and we can choose those to be positive or negative impacts. Um, I have um, a couple letters from students that I would like to share. Dear Emily, thank you for teaching us about birds. It was the coolest class ever. My favorite part was the raptors. My favorite one was the horned owl. I liked how he could turn his head. That was awesome. I wish I could be with you next year. I'm gonna miss you. I learned anyone can make a difference, even a kid. Thank you for showing me that. Dear Miss Emily, I want to thank you for working with us and teaching us how to treat the world better. You inspired us to help the world for years to come and possibly forever. You make us understand one person can make a difference. Now the class can make a huge difference for the animals in the entire human race. Thanks to you, we know how to make animals happy and how to love the outdoors. Thank you, your student who loves nature. Those are the reasons I do the work that I do. Those are compelling reasons. And Emily, thank you so much for your, your work. You are clearly, clearly engaging our youth in a way that really resonates with them and impacts them. So thank you, sincerely, thank you for your work. 
I don't know. Can you feel it? I, I can feel the excitement for this work through just the few programs we've shared with you tonight. And this is just a few of our programs at the Denver Audubon. That's not even all of our work. That's not even all of our impact. It's just some of the fun stuff that we wanted to share with you tonight. But there is so much more that we do out in the world to research, teach, and inspire actions that protect birds and their habitats. And friend, I am asking for your generous support of the Denver Audubon tonight in continuing our mission and continuing our impact. Again, you are going to do that by being online at birds3.gesture.com. And I'm gonna ask you actually to dig deep here in a moment. Now, at in-person events, we used to do a thing called a raise the paddle. People would raise the paddle when I would announce a certain donation amount. And then I would go through the room and accept everybody's gifts. Well, we're gonna do it a little bit differently this year because we're not in a room together. We are still sharing time, even though we are not sharing space. And that feels good, doesn't it? But I do want you to give your gift here in just a moment. Now, before you do, let's make sure that you either, you know, on your phone or your tablet, you are navigated to birds3.gesture.com so you can participate in the reason for the season. We're here to fundraise, right? Um, but before I ask for your gift, I want to just let you know that this online appeal or virtual raise the paddle, whatever you want to call it, we're going to keep it open until midnight this Sunday, June 14th. Now, please don't let that take away your sense of urgency for donating right now. The sooner we invest in our values, the better. And we want to know that we can count on your gift. I'm letting you know, though, that we're keeping the virtual raise the paddle or the online appeal open until Sunday so that you can tell your friends, your family, your coworkers, whoever you think needs to know about this. Other people you know who care about this work as well. We have an ambitious goal, but I'm certain we can do it. The goal is for us to raise with the virtual raise the paddle only, not the online auction, just this section of the program. We want to raise $14,000. And I know that's ambitious, but you know why I know we can do it? Because I see you through this screen. You are a mighty philanthropist. I see your philanthropic muscle being flexed right now. And here's another reason why I know we can do it. We have a pool of donors who created what's called a matching pool, and they've gotten us half of the way there. These matching pool donors have already given us $7,000 towards our goal. And what they want you to do, they wanted to inspire you. And so they will match your gift dollar for dollar. That means when you give $1,000, Denver Audubon gets $2,000. When you give $2,500, Denver Audubon gives $5,000. So we have $7,000 with which to match your donation and get us to that $14,000. So let's not leave money on the table. Let's utilize every single bit of this dollar for dollar match. Before we start giving our donations, I want to thank our matching pool donors. We've got to thank Wendy Woods, Carl Norbeck, Hi, Carl, I see you on the other end of the screen. Wendy, I see you too. Yvonne and Max Salfinger, hello friends. Happy to see you here. Thank you for sharing time with us this evening. And Lynn Forrester, Lynn, you are looking great, my friend. So these are our matching pool donors. Pardon me. These are our matching pool donors. And now you have the opportunity to make your gift and get these matched dollar for dollar. And I mean, do it now. Head to birds3.gesture.com. You will see our landing page and all you have to do is scroll down. I'm looking at the page right now and you'll see donate now. You can give in a, a dollar amount that's already indicated on the page or you can give in any amount that is meaningful to you. What matters is that you give. So let's begin to talk about the gift that you might give right now. Last year when we met in person, two people gave us a gift of a thousand dollars. Now, you may have not been there at the in-person event last year. This might be your first event. Wouldn't it feel good to just have a triumphant start to your philanthropic history with the Denver Audubon? If you can support us with a gift of $1,000 or more now, now's the time to hit that donate button on birds3.gesture.com. And let me tell you what a thousand dollars accomplishes. A $1,000 gift will help 143 students benefit from our classroom projects. That, that seems like an investment worth making. Another thing that your $1,000 gift could help fund 
16 hours of quality training for partner agencies like Parks and Wildlife or the Highline Canals who are interacting with the public and communities every single day. So now is the time. You want to send that gift in now and I'm gonna come over and take a peek. And while we do, we have gifts coming in. You're already doing amazing work. Oh, Michelle Bailey, thank you so much for your donation. I love it. And let's see, Anonymous. It's you do you, boo, but we love you, even if we don't know who gave that gift. Thank you, Anonymous. Marianne Erickson, thank you for your gift. It's your turn now. It's your turn. Are you on the website? Are you on birds3.gesture.com? Are you sending in your donation? I want to say thank you specifically to you right now. So right now is the time. So all gifts of $1,000 or more, we would love to see them coming in and we will graciously and gratefully put them right to work on behalf of the Denver Audubon. Let's talk about some other giving levels, shall we? I think we shall. $500 or more. Now, last year when we met in person, two folks were able to give a gift at around the $500 level. But again, we're here now in this virtual world. Can we outdo what we did last year? I think we can. And $500 will give 35 students the opportunity to experience research in action at the birding station. And because I wanna see who's sending in gifts right now, I'm gonna take a peek and they are coming in. Let's see here. I'm looking at the donations and Marianne Erickson, thank you so much. This is fantastic. Who else? Who else? Oh, Mary. Mary, I'm going to massacre your last name. I think it's Getter. I apologize if I said your last name wrong. Uh, Judy Henderson, thank you so much. So this is looking fantastic. Please keep the gifts coming in. Keep the gifts flowing. I want to say thank you to you right now. Let's talk about additional giving levels. When we met in person last year, 13 people were able to give a gift of around $300. Let's talk about what $300 can accomplish with the Denver Audubon. That enables us to devote one day to causes that protect birds and other wildlife, meaning that is a day in the work at the Denver Audubon. $300, that seems like a worthwhile investment, right? To make a day of Denver Audubon work happen. So if you can join us with a gift of $300 or more, we are accepting all gifts of $300 or more right now at birds3.gesture.com. And I really am waiting for your gift to come in. So do not delay. Okay, here we are. I am taking a peek who has popped into the giving. Oh, gorgeous. I see these gifts coming in. And yep, the gifts are coming in. Now, again, this is just the virtual raise the paddle. This doesn't even include the amazing money that we've already raised in our online auction. We've already raised over $22,000 in the online auction, but that's only half of the fundraising work. We still have to raise money in this virtual raise the paddle. So please send your gifts in right now. And let's talk about another giving level, shall we? 100 $50. Last year, when we met in person, about 24 people were able to join us with a gift around this level. And if you're able to join us with a gift around this level, $150 or more, the sky's the limit, friends. Go ahead and send them in now. Look, Philip McNichols, thank you for your amazing gift. That is fantastic. Liz O'Rourke, big thumbs up to you, friends. And who else is joining us? Who else is joining us? Michelle Ostrander, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are so grateful for your generosity and for your support. Keep those gifts coming in. I really wanna thank each and every one of you who's online right now, joining us at this event and supporting this fantastic work. Another anonymous gift. Some people are shy about their philanthropy. I understand that, um, but we love you, whoever you are. Thank you so very much. Okay, let's talk about our final giving level. Doesn't mean it's the only level that you can give. You can give at any level you want, but let's talk about what a $75 gift does for the Denver Audubon. The $75 gift helps keep our nature center open for one day. Can you believe it? 
$75. I feel like you should hop on and give $75 five times because it seems like a no brainer, right? It is just amazing that $75 can accomplish so much. So if you can join us with a gift at any level, any level whatsoever, now is the time. Now is the time to show your support of the Denver Audubon. And oh, it's so exciting. I see the gifts coming in. Let's see if there's anybody else that I can thank right now. Another anonymous gift, and we love those gifts. Well, I'm gonna continue to look at these gifts coming in and thank people because I am so grateful, but you know, I am not the only person who wants to thank you. I'm in just a moment, in just a moment somebody special wants to say thank you. But before that happens, I want to let you know, or I want to remind you that this appeal, the online virtual raise the paddle is staying open until Sunday at June, for, uh, Sunday, June 14th at midnight. That means no, yes, you should go right now. You should go right now and give, but then you can help spread the word and you can help get us closer to your goal. And the other thing I wanna remind you about is that our online auction will close five minutes after we close end this program. So continue to give your gifts. Thank you, Cynthia Christensen. I love it, Cynthia, thank you. JD, I think I already thanked you, but I'll thank you again. You can't thank a donor too many times, can you? Anyways, I'm so excited to see these gifts continuing to flow in to support Denver Audubon's work. And now, because I literally just said, it's impossible to say thank you to our donors too many times. Somebody wants to say thank you to you. Take it away. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for loving Denver Audubon and being there for us. Thank you. Thank you for your support. We could not do it without you. I could not do my work without their support, and we have a lot of work ahead of us. The support that they give, both in their time and their finances, really makes a difference in people's lives. It allows us to get out there and spread the message that birds are important, their habitats are important, uh, all of the places that we have on this earth and all the resources that birds are a part of are just important and we can make a difference. Without the support, um, I wouldn't have the opportunity to tell the stories of Denver Audubon. Thank you so much for your support and all you've done for Denver Audubon. Um, we could not have made it 50 years without all our members and donors and supporters and volunteers. Um, please stay involved and help us go to that next, the next level in the next 50 years. I still see donations pouring in and it is making me so happy. Harriet, thank you for your gift. And Cynthia, thank you for your gift. This is just a beautiful showing of support. Keep those gifts coming. Again, remember the online appeal, the virtual raise the paddle will stay open until Sunday. And you know, even in uncertain times, Denver Audubon continues to thrive. And it is because of you. It is, it's because of you. The staff is eternally grateful to everyone who supports the important work Denver Audubon accomplishes every year toward the mission to inspire actions that protect birds, other wildlife and their habitats through education, conservation and research. And before I go away, I wanna say thank you from me. Thank you so very much. Well, thank you so much, Sasha. You are awesome, and we really appreciate uh, your great work tonight. Um, you know, we have to dance <laughs> for all these great donations. Um, and uh, the, uh, the uh, silent auction is doing really well. We really appreciate everybody's support through the auction. Um, just a friendly reminder, the online auction will close five minutes after the end of this program. Um, thank you for participating um, in our first online auction and bidding on items so generously donated by local businesses, nonprofit organizations, sponsors, and Denver Audubon members. Please, please make sure you patronize these businesses and nonprofits. They need your business now more than ever. Even though the auction will close five minutes after the end of this program, our site will remain open for donations 
or to shop in the Denver Audubon store through Sunday at midnight. So if you have not donated yet, or if you have not bid yet, you still have an opportunity. So thank you for joining us tonight. We very much appreciate your support and donations. We look forward to getting back together with you in person. And uh, thank you. Have a good night and have a safe commute. Well, I guess at least to the kitchen or the living room. Thank you and good night.